let's talk new yarn. I'm Mindy, the dyer at Henlia Handmade, and all of my yarn is dyed naturally. Naturally meaning with plants, um, flowers, roots, tree bark, um, insects even. So all of my all of my yarn is dyed with natural products and all of my yarn is also um, from US sheep grown, raised, <laughs> I guess sheep are raised, uh, spun, the wool is spun here in the US and then of course I dye it in the US as well. So I'm here to talk to you today about my brand new spring collection 2023 and it is called the Desert Bloom Collection. Um, so let me tell you a little story. I was uh, kind of morning winter. <laughs> uh, it's been a long dreary winter here in Central Oregon and we're not used to that. Um, we get a lot of winter, yes, but we also usually get a lot of sunshine and blue blue sky days. So this winter has been dreary for us, very dreary. We haven't had the blue skies that we normally normally get. So um, my heart goes out to, <laughs> to those of you who, this is just a typical winter. Um, man, it's been hard. It's been hard for me. I'm very much looking forward to when it warms up and the sun comes out again and I can spend my mornings working on my on my porch. So anyway, so the Desert Bloom collection. I was morning winter. <laughs> um, just kind of dreaming about springtime and the flowers and the blue sky and, and just the the occasional warm sunny days that we get here in the spring. And, um, and I just looked out in my yard and I thought, wouldn't that be cool to see a full desert bloom out in my yard? Um, my yard is very um, um, natural. It's not landscaped. It's a lot of dirt, a lot of um, lava rocks, juniper trees and um, not really much landscape, not much landscaping. And um, I just thought, wow, wouldn't that be amazing if when I looked out my window, I just saw this, like everything was just blooming. And um, that kind of, that brought me the idea of coming up with a whole collection based on a desert bloom. So, um, I had a lot of fun with this. This was me dreaming about what my yard could look like if it actually had flowering plants in it, <laughs> besides just sagebrush. Um, okay, so I wanna show you everything um, and I will uh, do my best to remember the names properly. Um, when I when I come out with a new collection, it takes me a minute to remember my the new the all the colorway names, and um, sometimes I, uh, especially if I, when I'm on video and put on the spot, I'll <laughs> I will sometimes forget. So if that happens, I apologize. Um, the names I looked up. So <laughs> the colorway names don't necessarily match the flower that they're named after. I looked up um, local wildflowers, local to me wildflowers, and used those names um, just kind of as a loose guideline to name name the colorways. So whichever um, name spoke to me in connection to a colorway is what I went with. So um, these aren't these aren't necessarily <laughs> meant to represent the, the wildflowers that I named them after, but um, you know, maybe they'll have some resemblance, at least. I'm gonna get a, a sip of tea here. Harney and Sons Paris, one of my favorites, hot or cold. Okay, so let's talk about the colors. Um, this is fireweed.
This is the fingering weight. And this is the worsted weight. So these have lots of pinks, um, lots of different shades of pink, um, some, excuse me, some little pops of oranges and yellows. Um, even maybe some kind of purpley bits in here. This was dyed with, oh, I meant to, I meant to pull up my notes. Um, this was dyed with cochineal, which is an insect, um, lac, which is also an insect, and um, marigold, and madder root, I think. Um, anyway, I sprinkled all sorts of all sorts of fun colors on these. Oh, that's fireweed. Okay, next I have um, columbine, and that looks like this. That's the fingering weight, and here is the worsted weight. So you'll see, you'll probably be able to see the difference. The worsted weight did turn out a lot lighter than the fingering weight. Um, since I'm going to be ordering these, or making these to order, <laughs> sorry, I stalled out there for a second, um, because I, I'm making these to order, if you uh, want to request um, a lighter or darker shade, I can adjust it a little bit for you. Um, these, actually, this is a good time to bring this up. Um, these are very much artistic. So I, on all this whole entire collection, I just pulled out my dies and sprinkled and sprinkled and sprinkled and sprinkled. So um, it's unlikely that you're going to get two exactly the same, which is kind of the beauty of hand dyed yarn, right? Um, but this, yeah, this one, um, maybe a little bit more extreme than most cases. Um, I, um, I was kind of, <laughs> all right, I'll just be honest here. I was sort of undecided on whether or not I wanted it to be a brighter or a more chilled out mellow shade. So I kind of did both and then, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. If you want a more dye or less dyed, then just let me know. But this was also dyed with cochineal and um, marigold and kutch. Um, and I don't think I put matter in this one. But anyway, I just, I think it's really cool. Turned out great. Um, okay, let's go with Prairie Star. Okay, if you um, if you're in the Knit Mini Together community, this is the this is the um, the test skein that I dyed um, in the last video that I did. So that's the fingering weight, and then this is the worsted weight. And this is dyed with um, kutch and uh, cochineal, a, just a little bit of cochineal and lac. This um, this was my first experience ever dyeing with lac, and it's a purple. Uh, it's a pink and a purple, I guess. Uh, what I should say. Um, and so this was this was one this was really fun because I hadn't actually uh, used that dye before. So anyway, it's fun. Um, I like these because they kind of are a more chilled out counterpart to, say, fireweed. So these are all designed to coordinate together. 
so you could fade with these um, or if you were doing maybe a two um, colorway shawl and you needed one like a, a bright colorway and then a more, more mellow colorway for the contrast these would be these would be great these would be great together that is prairie prairie star <laughs> these were just so much fun to make um i hope i hope you love them as much as i do because um these were just a lot of fun uh, I just, I, I felt kind of like a mad scientist, like, all right, I'm just gonna take a sprinkle of this and a sprinkle of that, and I'm gonna put a little bit of this here and a little bit of that there, and oh yeah, I think I maybe want a little more. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. I don't usually just, like, let loose like that because, um, I don't, well, because natural dyes are precious, and I hate to, um, I hate to use the word waste, but... Um, experimenting can sometimes be challenging because if they don't, if it doesn't turn out at all, then I'm just out the yarn and the dye and um, like a, a container of natural dyes costs a significantly, um, significantly more than acid dyes. A little jar of acid dye is going to last a really, really long time in most cases, whereas um, natural dyes are consumed quite quickly. So, anyway, this is Larkspur. That's the fingering weight version. And, oh, interesting, this isn't turning the colors. Should be more purpley looking. But this was also done with lac and the green was created with Saxon blue and pomegranate. Ooh, was it pomegranate rind or was it rhubarb? Might have actually been rhubarb. Um, hmm, interesting. Well, anyway, this, um, I intentionally left, tried to leave some blank spots, um, to make it more variegated. That's Larkspur. <laughs> I really like this one too. Um, and it also looks really, really great with uh, Prairie Star. Because Prairie Star doesn't have a ton of that purple in it. It's more the um, tan, light brown kutch. So these, um, these coordinate really well. Okay, Spotted Fritillary is up next. That is this one. <laughs> As I was pulling this off my shelf, I my finger, my little pinky grabbed a loop, so I'm gonna need to rewind this up. But this, um, that's the fingering weight. And then here is the worsted weight. This one was a lot of fun to create too because it was very much a little bit of this and a little bit of that um, dye style. It has um, black and Saxon blue and some of the green that I used for Larkspur. And I put um, a bunch of marigolds on there and possibly even some kutch. I was trying with this, I was trying to see how many colors I could put on a skein without just turning them super muddy and, um, you know, unattractive. And uh, this was, yeah, it worked out really, really well. It worked out really well, actually. So, spotted fritillary. Next up is Monkey Flower. That was the fingering weight and this is the worsted weight. This was the, you know, it's a 
the base color is blue and then um, it has purple and yellow and green um, I guess some kind of pinky bits in there as well Saxon blue more of the green with the rhubarb Saxon blue combination I sprinkled marigold I sprinkled lac um, <laughs> this is one of my favorites I really love this one I really do um, you know I, I try not to have favorites but oh who am I kidding I'll say that about every single one that I pick up because I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not going to make more of yarn that I don't absolutely love. So I guess it should just go, it should go without saying that I, I love all of them. Excuse me. Okay. Queen's Cup is up. This is Queen's Cup on fingering. And Queen's Cup on worsted. Um, and this was just Saxon blue and then the green, the green stock that I created. Um, it's such a pleasing colorway. It's, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's calming. It's just like a calming lovely lovely colorway so greens and blues those are always have my heart <laughs> I'm a green and blue kind of girl um, okay and I have one more for the new desert bloom collection this one is called sand lily oh I remembered <laughs> I was afraid I was gonna forget and this one is kind of like um, a light brown and green and blue. This is the fingering weight. And the worsted weight. I like this one um, as a neutral, kind of a more chilled out neutral as well. Um, it looks great with monkey flower it looks great with spotted fritillary um, it looks great with columbine it's um yeah I kind of I kind of see this as sort of a neutral um, that would also be great for if you need um a like a brighter colorway and a more chilled out calm calming colorway then um, I think sand lily would be great it's also um, certainly can stand on its own as well it's um, it's it's beautiful too so that is the desert bloom collection I um, I really really tried to do something different this this with this collection um, even the way that I dyed them is different than how I've ever done in the past. Um, each skein, I can only do dye one skein at a time. This, um, or per dye pot, I guess, is um, what I'm trying to say. So I can technically dye three skeins at a time, but they're all going to be in their own. They're all going to be in their own dye pot. So um, the reason I did that is because I wanted to try to get them as variegated as I could possibly get them. So I lay the skein out and I really kind of like stretch it out as much as I can so that I have enough, um, so I see as much surface as possible and then just sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. The, um, this is a difference between natural dyes and acid dyes. Um, I shouldn't speak with authority on this because, because I'm not super familiar with acid dyes, but from what I've seen, um, with acid dyes, there's quick striking colors, so you can 
sprinkle the color on as long as you have um, your citric acid in there and it will strike and then um, you can flip the yarn over and do it the same on the back. Um, that's really tough to do with natural dyes. I haven't figured out how to do that yet with natural dyes, but um, this really was my attempt at making a more variegated colorway, colorways than what I've been able to create in the past. So um, I think I think I've been successful with that, and I'm happy with how very happy with how how it all turned out. So. Um, the dye consumption is probably more reckless than I've ever used the actual dyes in their raw form. Um, but it's been so fun to see how it all turns out. And, um, and I'm, yeah, I hope you, I hope you love it like I love it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was on the product listing pages, um, I included a little video it's just like a 10 second clip of me doing this. <laughs> just kind of turning the, oop, oh, turning the yarn around so that you can see, have a better idea of what it looks like if it was actually in your hand. Um, photography um, can be a challenge for me. So I just tried to um, add a little something extra to hopefully help. Um, let me know if that helps or not. Um, because, you know, I don't know, maybe I can do it even better next time. Um, yeah, just let me know if that, if that was beneficial or not. And if I should even keep doing it, maybe, I sh maybe I shouldn't even spend my time doing it next time. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's Desert Bloom. And if I could turn my, uh, barren, yard and property into these colors i totally would do it if i had a magic wand i would just whip that wand out right now and <laughs> give uh give the landscape some some great color um uh yeah that's what i have for you today i just wanted to show off the new collection uh do let me know if you have any questions um I'm always open to suggestions. Um, I'm here. I'm here. Just let me know what you want. And, um, you know, I'll let you know if I think that I can do it or not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The, the big thing. So I am this launching this collection as a, a made-to-order collection. So I don't typically do that. Um, but because, um, I guess probably just because of the quantity of dye that I've had to use with this collection, I didn't want to over make. So, um, I'm just going to make them to order this time and see how that goes. If you love it, let me know. If you hate it, let me know that too. Um, I know, I know sometimes you just want to order something and get it right away. This will take probably two to four weeks because, um, I, depending on, depending on, um, the yarn and the dye, um, I'm going to have to order some, put in some supply orders. So, um, yeah, I'm here. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Um, always trying to do better and make, make things for you that you want. <laughs> so um, you can see the full collection. I'll put the link below, but it's um, at henleyahandmade.product-category slash backslash desert dash bloom. Sorry, that's really long, um, but I'll, I'll link it down there. Um, yeah. And if you are new to Henley Handmade and you do not get my emails and the sales notifications and all that, um, please do sign up. That is bit.ly backslash fiberfriends and you will get 20% off your, your order for signing up. So try something new and you can get 20% off. So uh, until next time.